Be sure to go to FlipsideGaming.com and use promo code 6 for 10% off on orders over $10. Or the same with the Grizzly Gentlemen for awesome beard products. Both of them are fantastic deals. They help support the show. What is up, Planeswalkers? Theory 6 back with some more Magic the Gathering spoilers. Today we're talking about Call it. Call time. <laughs> Um, I am not going to go over any of the uh, leaked cards. Uh, I do have a dedicated channel on my Discord server, which uh, you can find in the link, uh, in the link below. Uh, there you can talk about them, and I have given a little bit of my um, of my discussion for them. But uh, I, I plead with you that um, if you are consuming the leaks, when you find that someone has a preview card that... that is uh, one of those leaked cards please still consume that content uh directly from them uh it, it's really important because that's kind of the only thing uh we as content creators uh get is a slight boost in engagement when we're given a preview card and oftentimes it has to be a preview card that actually matters right i've i've had one preview card i didn't get one this this year or for the set um and this is technically like you know no one necessarily cares about tuck tuck rubble fort um it's you know it's played in uh in a, a combo deck in historic which is really awesome uh, i think that's really cool but you know that video didn't necessarily like do any any big favors for me so i'm i'm, I'm gonna leave the discussion at that we're gonna talk about kaldheim kaldheim is a kind of north mythology north mythology uh themed set uh similar ish to how like amonkhet is um uh, uh egyptian um, it's, it's, I think it's more tied to, like, it's closer to, uh, Theros and Amiket than it is to Kaladesh. Um, Kaladesh had kind of a, um, a set dressing of, um, kind of Indian or, um, what was that, Western, Western Asia, uh, countries, um, whereas, you know, Theros, uh, and, uh, and Amiket and now Kaldheim seem to, like, have that be the focus, right? So, we know Sagas are back. We also have some uh, multicolored Sagas. And I guess we haven't had any of these yet. Um, this one showed on of the Skulls. Um, skulls, I assume, in this context are kings. Uh, I could be wrong, but that's just my assumption. Um, four mana. First uh, first uh, lore counter. Exile the top four cards of the library. You may, until the end of the next turn, you may play those cards. Um, we, it seems like we're getting more of these until the end of your next turn. Um, impulse draws, and I really do appreciate that. One of the one of the issues with the impulse draws, as they were, is that you had to like have a ton of mana to be able to use the card that gives you the impulse draw, and then to cast that impulse draw card. Um, so you think you see things with like light up the stage, um, kind of in this in this realm. So I, I very much appreciate more stuff like that. Four mana, essentially, this is four mana. Draw four cards, e essentially. You can play uh, you can play lands. Obviously, you still have to. Um, uh, deal with the the one lane per uh, turn rule um but just in general like this this is essentially four mana draw four cards in um in boros which is very nice like this is a way that you can do it and you got some more the next uh the next chapter whenever you cast a spell this turn put a one one counter on target creature control uh that's for the second and third chapter now what's nice is that this is just cast a spell you don't have to be casting like buffs you don't have to be tied down to creatures or artifacts or enchantments or anything like that it's just when you cast a spell you just get to put a counter on a creature you control and you know this is still in kind of a boring wheelhouse in my opinion i i, I want to see wizards i don't know like stop using plus one plus one counters so much especially for boros uh i mean especially especially just like for mono white i i want to see some other types of effects um but obviously this is this is fine um four mana I, I don't see this card seeing play kind of anywhere besides um limited yeah i don't really see this seeing play kind of anywhere um but it still is an additional option right this this is still technically you know drawing some cards uh for for boros you know maybe this maybe this sees play in uh, some some type of uh, uh deck in edh i just can't think of any we're getting the rest of the four pathways and flip this bad boy over. I don't think that. Yeah, whatever. Um, you have Dark Boar, the Black Green, Blight Step, the Black Red, Henge Gate, which is just like awesome, uh, the White Blue, and Bark Channel, the Blue Green. I'm just glad that they finished the cycle, like the the complete ten cycle. We don't have all of the triumphs, which bothers me. I'm not going to lie to you. It, it, it does bother me, possibly more than it uh, 
should yeah i said possibly i, I said it on purpose uh I, i'm just glad that we have access to all of these um the black red one maybe gonna help my uh my bolus decks but i doubt it pyre of heroes this is an interesting card so i am someone who played birthing pod in modern until it got banned i was devastated that birthing pod got banned in modern because i absolutely love it and i'm relatively certain that birthing pod could come back to modern and it would be fine but pyre of heroes is Yu-Gi-Oh players would would uh, know what this is, is like a retrain right it's a, it's a different it's a different version trying to uh, um be a, a fixed version you know hopefully not gonna be broken two mana artifact cool right off the bat it's only two mana whereas birthing pod was um technically four mana you're typically going to be play, paying uh, three mana and two life for it. But the difference is that the activation of this is two mana. Birthing Pod's activation is technically two mana, but it really it's one mana and two life. You tap Sacrifice a Creature, search your library for a creature card that shares a creature type with the Sacrifice creature, and has converted mana cost equal to one plus that creature's converted mana cost. Put that card on the battlefield, then shuffle your, uh, your library, activate this ability only any time you can cast a sorcery. For the, so, for the most part, this is Birthing Pod, except for a very specific phrase here. Ah. That shares a creature type. So now you have to think, right? It, if you're trying to do cool pod chain shenanigans, it's going to be more difficult. Uh, you're going to have to look for chains that involve, like, multiple creatures. You know, uh, the easiest way to do that would be with um, uh, uh, race class types. So if, if you look at things that were in um, the the pot decks, theoretically. Uh, we got we got Spike Feeder. I think it's Spike Feeder. Uh, yeah, I got Spike Feeder. This is just a spike. You're not going to be able to play this. Uh, you have something like Malyra. No, she's a human scout. Human, pretty fine. You know, pretty decent. But you're... You know, Scout, probably not going to get that much of. Um, Resto Angel. Resto Angel is just an angel. Right? Uh, Siege Rhino. I'm pretty sure. I cannot spell. That's what I'm pretty sure of. I'm pretty sure it's just a, it's just a Rhino. Right? So you're not going to be able to play, like, the same toolbox package that you were previously. Right? You're very limited in what you can do th with this. And I'm certain there's going to be a combo deck that is made with Pyre of Heroes. That's kind of similar to uh, the previous Birthing Pod deck. But it is absolutely much more limited. And in limiting the deck this way, you also you also have to realize that, like, this... The way this is built, it benefits decks that have... Or, or creature types that have already had a lot of support. So something like Elves, this is going to be a lot easier to, to find a combo in. Something like um, Humans, right? Th there's going to be something... That's, that's easier to use this for. That said, uh, Birthing Pod is only uh, legal in green color identity commander decks, and this one can be in any color identity commander deck. So that's that's quite nice. So uh, maybe if you're playing, uh, you know, a goblin deck or a dragon deck or something like that, and uh, you're looking for some chains, yeah, Pyre of Heroes. I, I do like the card. Uh, I'm disappointed that there's this is such a high restriction. I, 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 wish, I wish the restriction wasn't this i do agree that there should be a restriction because i i can recognize that birthing pod can be too good whatever but i do i do wish that this restriction wasn't as harsh i don't know what it could be though valkyrie harbinger uh this is one of the uh like the starter decks or something like that i'm not exactly sure what exactly uh they're called but six mana four five flying lifelink angel cleric at the beginning of each end step, if you gain four more life this turn, create a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance. So this is essentially a um, a larger version of Resplendent Archangel. Resplendent Angel, I'm not sure which. Um, however, you have to gain less life. This also has innate life gain, uh, or life link. It's also an angel cleric. Something that uh, appears to be the case is that we're having angel tribal, but we're also having cleric tribal, uh, which is quite nice because that goes with the Zendikar party mechanic. Uh, people also just like angels. Like, I just, I like this card. It's not necessarily, like, great. Um, uh, Starnheim seems to be one of the worlds, and it's probably just, like, the, the Valhalla angel word or wherever the Valkyries are from. Um, so, it's a cool card. It, it's a starter deck card, though. Certlin Elementalist, uh, looks like giants, 
So, okay. So, Angels, uh, I believe, are in white-black. Giants are in, I believe, blue-red. Seven mana for an 8-8 eight, eight giant wizard. Okay, we've actually been seeing, like, if you look at kind of historic, we have kind of an approaching, a, a decent giant tribal deck. You know, we're, we're approaching there. Um, we have some cards that care about giants, not a ton, but we also just have some decent cards that are giants, right? You have, obviously, the Elder Giants, but then you have things like Bone Crusher Giant. You have Beanstalk Giant. Uh, the Board Wipe Giant, whose name I'm forgetting right now. Realm Cloak Giant, I think. So you, you have potential for, even if it's a little bit meme uh, for kind of a meme giant deck uh, in Historic, which is just cool. At additional cost to cast a spell, reveal a giant card from your hand or pay two. That's a yikes. Uh, this would have obviously been a lot better if it were, um, if you, like, cast or reveal a giant as you cast this, you get to pay two less. Because seven for an 8-8, eight, eight, that's fine. Nine for an 8-8, eight, eight, mm, don't like it. Whenever it attacks, you may cast an instant or sorcerer spell from your hand without paying its mana cost. The thing is, you're gonna have to have giants to make this spell not super high. So how many instant sorcerers are going to realistically be playing? It is a starter deck deck or card though, so meh. Hey, look, it's a black angel. It looks like there's also going to be red black berserkers. Um, but that's cool. Five mana, five three, flying, treble, flamble, as they call it. Pay three life, return, cleaving reaper from your graveyard to your hand. Activate this ability only if you had an angel or berserker into the battlefield under your control this turn. Very interesting. Uh, I like the fact that it doesn't have a mana cost. Um, I do like the fact that with angels, with like an angel deck, you're going to be getting um, a life gain so you can kind of mitigate uh, the the life loss from this and you have a threat that, you know, is kind of ongoing. Um, obviously, these work decently together. You know, you play one of them, you get the other one back. You wait till the first one dies. You play the second one, get the other one back, etc., etc. 5-3 isn't great, but, you know, Flample and uh, a way to get it back. She's actually not bad. Right of the of the starter deck cards, she's pretty okay. Shirtland Flinger. Hey, look, it's a Berserker and a Giant. The blue red and the black red. Whenever Shirtland, all right, it's a it's a four six. Whenever Flinger attacks, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, Shirtland Flinger deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to any target. If the sacrificed creature was a Giant, Shirtland Flinger deals twice that much damage instead. This is a five mana four six that does something not terrible on attacks, right? Um, I honestly, I don't think this card is, I think this is probably the best one we've seen so far of these, of these five, uh, monocolored, uh, starter cards or whatever, uh, because you can just like throw things at people. <laughs> I mean, imagine essentially you, you are playing a deck that includes something like a uh, Croxa, right? You attack with this and Croxa, Croxa triggers, uh, they, you know, discard a card, maybe they don't, they lose 3 life, then you, you sacrifice Kroxa to Shirtland Flinger, and you deal 12 damage to your opponent, right? That's 15 potentially in one turn, and that's not including, you know, the 2 damage you dealt with Bone Crusher Giant, uh, the 2 additional damage uh, you dealt when they dealt with Bone Crusher Giant, right? So there could be like a Black Red, maybe a Mardu, um, more aggressive style Giants deck. Uh, I mean, you throw, uh, throw a Realm Cloak Giant at these fools, and bada bing bada boom, you're dealing 14, I believe that was a 7-7, seven, seven, right? Like, this is... This, I feel like, it, it's it's not going to be a good deck. It's going to be a meme deck, but it's fun, right? It's something that I think would be fun to play with in Historic, and uh, I'm going to do it. I'll do it again. Uh, warrior. Did I, I didn't see another Warrior, I don't think. Uh, Canopy Tactician. It's a 4 mana 3-3 three, three, uh, Elf Lord. Other Elves you control get plus 1, plus 1. Tap, add, triple green. She's she's also, like, not bad. Uh, I don't think she'll be... She, pro she might be played in just, like... Maybe she'll be played in Elf Ball. She'll definitely be played in Elf Brawl. But I don't know if she'll be played in Elf Ball. But possibly. Essentially, like, that deck is almost entirely Lords now. <laughs> like, Allosaur Shepherd, 2-drop Lord, 3-drop Lord, 4-drop Lord. <laughs> Crater Hoof win, right? Um, you know, it's, it, it's cool. I don't care about Elves. So I don't have much to talk about for that one. I believe all of these... Uh, I'm essentially just look at this. Um, since there's not two numbers, there, if it doesn't have two numbers, it's from something extra, and these are from, like, the, the starter decks or whatever they are. Armed and Armored, hilariously good card. Two mana, instant. Vehicles you, vehicles you control become artifact creatures until end of turn. Essentially, you don't have to crew them. They just, they're, they become active. Choose a dwarf you control. Attach any number of equipment you control to it. This is good in vehicle decks. This is good in dwarf decks. 
if if you have uh, equipment as well. It's just it's a cool card. Um, like if you if you think about it, right? Like one of the issues in vehicle decks is having the creatures sufficient creatures to crew your vehicles and uh, sufficient vehicles to get crewed. But with this, you don't need the creatures as often. You get to just be like, I play the best creatures. But I'm also, I also get to play more vehicles. And then bada bing, bada boom, smash them in the face. It's great. I love it. Also, it's an instant, so you can also surprise block with your vehicles, which is great. Starnheim Aspirant. Starnheim is the angel world, apparently. Also, God, this art is great. Three mana, two, two, human and cleric. Angel spells you cast, cost two less to cast. This is a dragon speaker shaman. Uh, for those of you who don't know, dragon speak shaman. It's a dragon speaker shaman, except it's easier to splash. It's easier to splash. Now, yes, this does have three creature types, which theoretically could matter, but this does the, the same thing, right? Not only that, like this this card, it's a human, cool. These two creature types essentially don't matter. I guess maybe like this can matter sometimes. This can matter sometimes. Human and cleric are reasonable uh, uh, creature types here, especially considering we already noticed that the angel tribal. Has, or at least the white part of the angel tribal has some some uh, lean in to cleric tribal, so this is quite nice. I mean, if, when you consider um, some of the some of the angel cards that are or some of the cleric cards that are in standard that give you angels or something, you have uh, da, 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 I'm I'm Garbo. I've completely forgotten uh, da, 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 cleric white. Uh, I hate everything. Cleric white, and let's do historic, please. You'll see. We've got Angel Destiny, Angel Claire. Pretty decent. Um, this could be like a sideboard card. Uh, we have Bishop of Wings, right? Like Bishop of Wings, whenever an angel enters the battlefield under your control, you gain four life. Whenever an angel you control dies, create a 1-1. One -one. Like this is a human cleric. It comes down like at a good place on the curve. It's good stuff. Uh, Containment Priest, good sideboard card because it doesn't care about your tokens and you're going to be making a lot of tokens. Um, Da, 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 da. That's maybe a sideboard card. You could maybe play this because there's a lot of life gain, but frankly, you're probably not going to need it. Um, you could possibly play this in the main deck. I, I'm not sure if you need it. Possibly, you know, you have you have things. Great sideboard option. Um, and then, speak, like, Speaker of the Heaven, Soul Warden. Right? Like, you have immediate synergy. Maybe this in the sideboard. Maybe this in the sideboard. Who knows? Um, but you have immediate synergy with, um, with angels already. Right, with angels you have some cleric value. The thing is, right, it's it's what exact structure does that take? And for a constructed historic deck, I think it's relatively obvious. Um, you kind of only play the best of the the one drops, two drops, three drops, four drops. Maybe you play some angel, uh, maybe you play some five drops. But then uh, you, if you do go go like uh, white and green, you could play like collected company. Maybe you have a couple of shalais. Um, if you don't play collected company, you have access to like uh, that one angel resolute angel or something like that that uh, gets copies of itself or no it's a legion angel from uh, the sideboard you have, you have stuff like that you could even play like lyra but in brawl for example you can just play all these cards let's play an angel cleric tribal deck it's cool I, I like it i just like that it exists uh it it helps it's gonna help the angel edh decks just the way uh dragon speaker shaman helps the uh dragon decks except this art is way better I'm not saying I'm not saying like the other one isn't good, but this is great, great art. I don't like this art. I don't like how this guy's looking at me. <laughs> War chant or scald? Oh, maybe the scalds are just the dwarves. That would make sense because I think the dwarves are in red, white, and these. I don't know. Three mana dwarf cleric. Whenever War chant or scald uh, becomes tapped, if it's an enchanted. If it's enchanted or equipped, create a 2-1 red dwarf berserker creature token. It's 2-3. So that's pretty cool. Now, once again, we're seeing this enchanted or equipped. So we're getting more of that uh, confirmation that Wizards is going to accept that it's best to, to make most of these cards work uh, work in either uh, scenario. And you just get, you just get a good old-fashioned 2-1. And what's nice here is that it, it's become tapped. You don't have to attack with this. So theoretically, you know, maybe it's just equipped or enchanted for whatever reason. Uh, but then you tap it to crew a vehicle. You still get this additional dwarf, which is going to help you crew more and larger vehicles. So I really do like the design of this card. It's, you know, it's not going to be a, a major player in Historic at all. Um, but it's just another one of those awesome options that uh, I really appreciate existing. Yulful Valkyrie. Bruh. 
I love to see a two mana angel. Two mana angel. Two mana one three flying. Whenever another angel enters the battlefield under your control, put a one one counter on Youthful Valkyrie. It's not even plus one plus one until end of turn. She gets a plus one plus one counter. Now I know I said I want to see less one one counters. In scenarios like this, I like this. This is a fantastic angel because it curves nicely into some three drop angels that we have access to. Uh, we're, you know, Splendid Archangel, we have the um, that one angel that's played in the life gain decks that makes her life gain a little bit uh, higher, and then when you reach a certain life threshold, she gets bigger, like that as well. Um, it curves nicely into that. And then on your turn three, you're attacking with a, a two mana, two four flyer. Like, that's good. I, I don't think it's good enough to see... I don't think there's going to be enough synergy. There might... We, we have not seen a lot of the cards at all. Um, I, I doubt there's going to be enough synergy to make, like, an actual... Even, like, Tier 2 um, Angel Tribal Historic deck. But it, there will absolutely be a, a ton of fun to be had in a, a more casual uh, Angel deck. And the fact that we're getting a nice 2-mana Angel is awesome. We have a couple of 2-mana Angels. Uh, I... <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm an awful person. Uh, I just, I just want to do it. Uh, CMC equal to two. Yeah, not a lot. Sarah Avenger, <laughs> Angelic Page. Both of these are on, uh, or no, this one's on Arena. This one is not. This one is bad, and this one is, uh, bad. <laughs> so, really, really, we're, we have, like, two, two angels with two mana. So, it's just really awesome to see. Another uh, two-mana angel that's actually, like, decent. Absorb Identity is really cool. Two-mana instant. Return target creature to its owner's hand. Already, that's that's fine. That's a fair rate. You don't love it, but it's a fair rate. You may have shapeshifters you control become copies of that creature until end of turn. That's awesome. Uh, now, are clones, are clones normally shapeshifters? Uh, what's a body double? Body double. I think they are, usually are. Shapeshifter, yeah. So, I have, a, I have a Riku deck. I have two Riku decks. One is a creature reflection, one's a spell reflection. The creature reflection is a lot of clones. There's a ton of clones. This is awesome because I can just be like, all right, there's a really scary dragon on the field right now. I'm going to go ahead and bounce that to your hand. All my creatures are now dragons, uh, and I'm going to kill you. Um, what's also nice is that I play something called Biovisionary. Biovisionary is an alternate way of winning. If you have, a, at the end of your turn or something, if you have uh, four copies of Biovisionary, I think you win the game. Uh, it might be four, it might be higher, I don't know exactly. I could look it up, but I don't care. Uh, but you can, I can bounce one of my own Biovisionaries. All of a sudden, my Shapeshifters turn into Biovisionaries. I move to the end step, trigger, Biovisionary win. So it's really it's really cool. I really like the idea of that. Um, this, this art kind of looks hideous, if I'm reading this correctly. Because it looks like this is the, the Shapeshifters, like, skin or something. And it's trying to form this, and I, I, the more I look at it, the... Why is this tree like this? I don't like the right angles. I'm gonna click on this. Art is scary. Giant's Grasp is fucking hilarious. <laughs> Giant's is big enough, it's like... Oh, this is mine now. Four mana, enchant or enchant giant creature you control. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, gain control, target non land permanent for as long as Giant's Grasp remains on the battlefield. Note. This is a, a super fair theft card. Right, we look at something like Agent of Treachery. One of the big reasons uh, Agent of Treachery is busted, even though it's a seven mana card, is that you, it's a, as a creature, you can reuse its ETB, you can copy it a ton of times, bada bing, bada boom, you've stolen too much of your opponent's stuff. And the, because it's permanent, it th doesn't matter if you remove it. Like, it's not until it leaves. Giant's Grasp is an enchantment, so you have to tie it to a creature, right? You have to actually have it uh, be on a creature. If that creature dies, they get the card back. If in Giant's Grasp dies, they get their card back. It's flavorful. I, I like the card. Is it good? Probably not. Even in the Giant's deck, probably not going to play it. Elder Fang Ritualist. So I believe elves are green-black. So I guess clerics are white-black. Although the angels are white-black. So I didn't think that would be the case. I don't know. I don't care. Uh, when Elder Fang Ritualist dies, return another target elf card from your graveyard to your hand. 3 mana, 3 1. It's an elf card. I don't care about elves. <laughs> Renegade Reaper. Three mana, two, three, Angel Berserker. Getting some more cheap elves. Awesome. Uh, flying. When a Renegade Reaper enters the battlefield, mill four cards. If at least one Angel card is milled this way, you gain four life. More ways of gaining life. Um, I. It's... We don't know yet how the Angels are going to care about... Wait a minute. Where were you? This one? No. Oh, it worked... It works with uh, it works with her because you can mill her into your graveyard, 
And then because you had an angel enter the enter the battlefield, you can gain you can use three of that four life you gained to put it back into your hand. It does it does go back in your hand, right? Yeah. Okay, sure. If we, if we see more more effects like that, then I think this is, I think this is an interesting card. Good, no, but interesting, yes. Thorn Mantle Striker, five mana for a four three, Elf Rouge. Good rogues for uh, the party mechanic. When it enters the battlefield, choose one. Remove X counters from target permanent where X is the number of elves you control, or target creature an opponent controls gets at minus X minus X until end turn where X is the number of elves you control. This is kind of weird to me because this feels like a limited card. Right? This like feels like a really great uncommon that you would want uh, to draft in the elves deck. But it's not in limited. Because it's not like an actual part of the set. So that very much confuses me. Because like, I feel like this would just be a good card in the set, right? Maybe I just don't know uh, limited well enough. Bearded Axe, three mana, equip two. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one for each dwarf, equipment, and or vehicle you control. Now notice, this doesn't say enchantment, right? So they're, they're still having separate uh, boons to artifact or, or equipment versus enchantment decks, but some of the some of the benefits um, on like the creatures and stuff are, are gonna say both, so I like that. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one for each dwarf equipment and or vehicle you control. So notably, they'll get at least plus one, plus one. The thing is, three mana equipped two for plus one plus one is Garbo. Three mana equipped two for plus two plus two, not great. It's not even great for plus three plus three. Um, realistically, you'd, you'd want probably a plus four plus four. Even then, I'm not loving this card. Fire Giant's Fury, two mana sorcery. Target giant you control gets plus two plus two and gains triple until end of turn. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player this turn, exile that many cards from the top of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. This is a... a, a uh, a buff for giants. Unfortunately, of course, it's not a combat trick. I, I do think that because of the way it's worded and what it does, it would probably be too good as a combat trick. But still, you get to buff at one of your giants, and you, how much, however much damage you, de you deal, you get to, to have a little bit of extra uh, boon there. I do like it. Um, it's probably too cute for the giants deck that I'm thinking of in my mind, but it, it, it might make the cut. Gilded Assault Cart. <laughs> Wait... <laughs> What do you mean assault cart? It's for a mine, dude. <laughs> Three mana for a 5-1 trample uh, crew 2 vehicle. Sacrifice two treasures. Return gilded assault cart from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, so treasures are back. Uh, by the way, if you're if you're thinking like vehicles are, are going to be prominent in this set, I don't know if that's necessarily going to be the case. Uh, vehicles are, I believe, deciduous. Wizards essentially is saying uh, we're, we're going to use vehicles whenever whenever the card makes sense. Right? If... if if the card works better as a vehicle, we're going to let it be a vehicle. We're not going to... It's not going to need to be a large theme with the set. Um, but treasures are back, so that's cool. Group two. Eh, I don't care about this card. Elven Ambush. Four mana. Instant. That dude is... Dude is stacked. Um, create a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token for each elf you control. So this is kind of interesting because of... Mar... Win? I know too many cards. Whenever another elf uh, enters a battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Marwyn the Nurturer. So what's cool is that uh, you play, Mar let's say you play uh, turn 1 elf, turn 2 elf, turn 3 elf, right? And Marwyn's your turn 3. On turn 4, you play this, you get 3 elves, putting 3 counters on Marwyn, right? And then, you know, she has 3 power. You know what, let's say she has 4 because uh, you, your turn 2 elf was an elvish clan caller. Boom. Um, she has four power. She uh, taps for four mana. And you play another one. <laughs> you play another uh, Elvish Ambush. And the thing is, it's an instant. You can do it at instant speed. It's really cool. Um, maybe it'll be pay pl played not in like, not in like Crater Hoof Elf decks, but maybe in like uh, Swarm Elf decks, where it's just like a bunch of elves. Blade Walker Ritualist, I believe, is a... Uh, the Shapeshifter tribe is going to be blue-green. Three mana, three, three. Shapeshifter Changeling. Already, like, I, I like the stats. Whenever another creature named Glade Walker Ritualist enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. So this works, like, technically, you just need to play more of these cards. But when you clone this, 
I believe it gets it gets the name. I'm I'm fairly certain of that fact. So it, it yeah no it does because that's how it works with legendary creatures dum dum. Um, so yeah, if you like play this on turn three on turn four you clone it you get to draw a card. So that's cool. Rampage of the Valkyries. Oh my god, I'm gonna love this. Five five mana enchantment. When Rampage of the Valkyries enters the battlefield, create a 4-4 white angel token with flying and vigilance. Already, you're getting a Sarah Angel for for Sarah Angel mana. You just get that. Whenever an angel you control dies, each other player sacrifices a creature. It's it's uh, um It's a more limited Grave Pact slash Dictative Erebos. However, it comes with a creature. It's not going to matter all that often, but if you're playing an Angel Tribal deck, an EDH for example, and if you're already running black, you're possibly, maybe, possibly, already running those cards. And you can either add this or subtract one of those cards to replace this, because it's functionally the same. If almost all of your creatures are angels, you don't care if it has that restriction of angels. But it's just in great. I just, I love it because it, it makes, an, it makes a Sarah Angel. It's just, it's Sarah Angel mana, mana, and it gives you the Sarah Angel. And it has upside. Magda, Brazen Outlaw, she looked very upset. Two mana, two one, Dwarf Berserker. Other No, I, I knew, I knew Berserkers were in this episode. I was literally talking about them over here somewhere. Other dwarves you control get plus one plus oh. All right, dwarves are apparently very aggressive. What happened to dwarves being like sturdy and like stocky, like not being like brutes? Like, didn't it make sense that dwarves are like tankier? They have more more toughness than power. Whatever, it's fine. Whenever a dwarf you control becomes tapped, becomes tapped, create a treasure token. This is great for crewing. Sacrifice five treasures. Search your library for an artifact or dragon card. Put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. This is in the actual set for for what it's worth. Sacrifice five treasures, only five, only five. Search your library for any artifact or any dragon. It is. It's not like you're putting it into your hand. You have to cast it. No. You put it on the battlefield. Sack five treasures, get Dracoseth. Sack five treasures. In, in like EDH or something, you get, you know, Worm Coil Engine or, God, you could get um, Planar Bridge, uh, other cards that I, whose name I can't think of, uh, Honorable Mention to a Trading Post. You know, you can just get whatever you want. It's, it's, it's essentially, it's discounted because you're only paying five for what you're probably is going to be like a six, seven, eight mana card. And you tour for it. This card seems really good. Now, obviously, you have you have some stretches that you know you have you have to go through some hoops. These hoops aren't that hard to go through. Realm Walker, three mana, two three shapeshifter, changeling. As Realm Walker enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of your library. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a cool shapeshifter. You you get to have a. Uh, a nice bonus creature. It's green, so you know you can only have it help so many, so many things. <sighs> Maybe this can fit in like a Coco something. Humans. I just can't. I can't think of a tribe that like needs this in these colors. You know. Like maybe if this were like red. I mean, obviously the shapeshifters are blue and green, but I don't. I can't think of a tribe that would need these in this color. Maybe, maybe beast tribe. Oh. Uh, I, I so a lot of these I, I chose the real art, and uh, I did that for some reason. I just don't remember what it was. Um, for this one, I chose this one. I don't. I don't know why, but like I, I think I don't like her hair because she just looks like the weekend to me. And the and the official one, it just, old school weekend, pineapple hair weekend. I, I don't like it. I just don't like it. This one though, it looks great. It's funny when I first saw Kaya, I didn't like her all that much. I really like Kaya. <laughs> she's awesome. I've grown to like her more and more uh, each time she's appeared. Five mana, five loyalty, legendary uh, planeswalker Kaya. Plus one, put a ghost form counter on up to one target non-creature 
uh, non-token creature, it gains when this creature dies or is put into exile, returns to the, uh, its owner's hand, and uh, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. It's similar to Kai's Ghost Form. It's, you know, it's a way to get stuff back. However, uh, I think for balance, they essentially had to make it. So you, you get something, you can get a 1-1 one, one flyer, um, but you have to recast the thing. For what it's worth, I think that's fine. <laughs> Right? Uh, it's like, oh, cool. Like, you kill one of my things. I still have a threat, uh, an attacker or blocker. Uh, and I just get to cast the thing again. Like, you want to play this in something that has ETBs, right? Uh, you put this on, like, a Yarx Fenlurker or a um, Basilica Bellhunt, right? You put this on things like that. Raven Chupacabra. Um, you just get to reuse uh, those abilities. Minus three. Exile target, nine land permanent. Any of them. Just exile. Goodbye. Oh, you have a Planeswalker? Nope. You have an enchantment? Nope. Artifact? Nope. Land? Okay. You can keep the land. Creature? Nope. It's great. I love it. Like, this is this essentially is like five mana, two loyalty planeswalker that ETBs to exile something. And it's exile. It, like, they don't even get the destruction. It's, it's great. Minus seven. Which, for what it's worth, is not terribly hard to get to. Because, like, if you have the creatures, like, if your creatures are dying, they're going to be leaving behind corpses. Or I guess technically spirits, to help her survive. So it's not going to be terribly hard to get to seven. You get an emblem with, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may cast a legendary spell from your hand, from your graveyard, or from among cards you own in exile without paying its mana cost. I love that last part. Or own in exile. Nice. It's only legendary spells, but it is legendary spells. You, it has to be cast, so you can't get any, like, legendary lands, but you get legendary sorceries, planeswalkers, artifacts, enchantments, creatures. I don't think there are any legendary instants yet. So that's nice. But what's really awesome is that because of, because of the way this works, and because of the fact that uh, Kaya herself is a legendary planeswalker, you just minus seven her as soon as you get to seven. And then on your next upkeep, you get the caster for free. And guess what? You just start minus three and not caring. Because if, if she dies again, you get to just cast her again. It's great. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm not even sure you need all that many uh, legendary things to make the ultimate worth it. Um, because the idea, right, is that the plus one and the minus three are just giving you overall board value, like board... Uh, board control and once you get to that minus seven you can start really pushing that advantage um yeah no I, she's awesome I, I love this card oh so i have a i have a uh, i have a chromat uh planeswalker edh deck and obviously when i'm evaluating planeswalkers for like constructive formats you typically just look at the the, the first and second abilities you don't want to give us uh, too much credence on the alts because you know you're the rare game is one where you alt. But when you have doubling season, for example, then the alts get a little bit more reliable. And one of the metrics I look at um, on whether or not a new Planeswalker gets a, uh, gets a, a chance at uh, the Chromat deck is, can they ultimate immediately after a um, uh, they come down with a doubling season? She does. And because of the nature of that deck, it is full, oh, it is full of legendary spells, or legendary uh, permanents. That's great. It's, it's great. She's great. Halvar, God of Battle, a.k.a. Uh, Sword of the Realms. My man's is a sword. <laughs> um, so Halvar, four mana, uh, legendary creature god, creatures you control that are enchanted or equipped have double strike. Cool, sure. Uh, at the beginning of each combat, you may attach target aura or equipment attached to a creature you control to target creature you control. It's a 4-4. Um, I hate this card. I, I loved this card. I loved this card. Until I read this line. In order to move an aura or equipment, it has to already be attached to a creature. Now, I understand why they would need it for aura. Auras can't sit in limbo. They, can't, they have to be attached to something. Equipment don't. And I would have really preferred if they just gave him another fucking line. So that it's, you know, attach an aura attached to a creature you control or an equipment to target creature you control. Right? I, I, I hate it. I'm so, like, this card had the, the chance of being good. 
And I legitimately think that it is because of this one line. I, I could be wrong. Whatever. Sword of the Realms. Equipped creature gets plus two plus one has vigilance. Uh, whenever equipped creature dies, return to its owner's hand. Uh, equip two. I don't think this card is great. It's definitely better than the whatever the mythic rare sword from I think uh, Commander Legend. Like, white, white and Commander Legend got garbage. Um, I think it's better than that. But like plus two plus O and vigilance, I don't care. Right? If my creature has like I understand that like. Uh, if it dies, it can, it, we can return it back to hand, sure. Um, what happens if you're exiled? Uh, obviously, like, the plus two in Vigilance, like, it may, it's like, oh, I want to be aggressive, but, like, the point of Vigilance is that you can block, but having just the plus two on attack means that, like, on, on our power, means that, you know, we're not buffing our, uh, our toughness so we can die easier. But then, oh, cool, it, like, you can get it. It's, I don't, I don't think it's good. <laughs> I just, I don't think... That this card is good. What's nice about the gods, because I assume all of them are templated like this, is that you can, um, like, if you have extra copies, essentially, you can you can at least cast the equipment version of it. And at least for this one, it, its cost is literally the same. I, I hope that is going to be that way for the rest of them, but its cost is, like, literally the same, right? Halvar is two, white, white. This is one and one, two, and white and white. So, you know, you could technically play Halvar. Even if you don't play another land, you draw another Halvar. You can play Sword of the Realms and equip it to him. Then, cool, he's a 6-4 with Vigilance, Double Strike. And if he dies, you can return him to your hand. Maybe I'm just wrong and I'm, like, too jaded on white cards, especially white Mythics. But the, this card just doesn't do it for me. Uh, I will admit that the... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The Showcase style is pretty cool. It like it has like the wood grain and everything. Like it feels like a relief in like a uh, a hall, right? So that's cool. It's the best boyo. Sarulf Realmeter, three mana, three three wolf. Um, this has a beard, and I love that. I mean, first things first. Like this is this is just a cool wolf. Plain wolves. Whenever Absin wolves, for example. Whenever a permanent and opponent controls is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on Sorolf. Cool. You, you get bigger and Abzan, like you're playing removal anyway. Nice. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Sorolf has one or more plus one plus one counters on it, you may remove all of them. If you do, exile each other non-land permanent with converted mana costs less than or equal to the number of counters removed this way. Now, when I first read this, I thought it was just equal to. Um, because that's, that's what a lot of these types of cards do. You know, Ratchet Bomb, uh, Blast Zone. A lot of these cards are just equal. This is equal to or less than. And that's nice. What's also nice is that he doesn't affect himself. Yes, he affects the rest of your permanence, so you do need to be careful, but you get to just get rid of things. You know, you, you play Sarulf. He's a 3-3. Three, three. Your opponent is not going to want to attack uh, their smaller creatures into this. Uh, on your next turn, you can just, like, kill something of theirs. Excuse me. Um, and then your upkeep, you know, is a 4-4. Four, four. You don't have to. You don't have to blow it off yet. It gets to a five-five. Cool. You're getting more threading. That's for sure. You can start attacking more. Your opponent's not going to want to chump block because if they chump block, then a permanent of theirs is putting into uh, into the graveyard. They don't really want to do that. But now, you know, maybe he's at three. And you're like, hey, I see you have some stuff there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, blow up the world. And what's nice, what is great, is you exile. You don't even put them in their graveyard. For what it's worth, it makes sense. Like, if you put it, if, if you had them sacrifice or destroy them all, uh, it would trigger this. So, obviously, they had to do it this way. But the fact that it exiles is nice. For what it's worth, they, it didn't, they could have still had to destroy. It literally could just be whenever a permanent, uh, an opponent controls is put into a graveyard. Um, besides due to Seraph. So maybe, maybe they wouldn't have a, a clean wording for it, but uh, I don't like this one uh, as much. Literally just because it doesn't have a beard. It's great art, but this Duggo has a beard. Also, Chris Ron is one of my favorite artists, so. Now, I want to point out another thing. This has a freaking beard, dude. I love, I hope that the horse, uh, Slepnir, uh, that version, I hope that has a beard. I will be a little sad if it doesn't, because so far we've got two, we're two for two on animals with beards, and I love it. Um, Toski, bearer of secrets. My man's has a tail that is, like, paper with words on it, I guess. Cool. Uh, four mana, one one. Legendary creature swirl. 
This spell can't be countered. All right, sure. Indestructible. Okay, uh, more godly than the other gods, but all right. Toski, uh, bearer of secrets, attacks each uh, combat of Abel. Okay, okay sure. Uh, I mean, it can't be, it's indestructible, so I guess that's fine. Whenever could you control this combat damage to a player, draw a card. Why? Green doesn't need more card advantage. Uh, this card's cool because it also has a beard, but uh, this card is better because it has a ginger beard. That's all for the first uh, for the first set of spoilers. Um, spoilers uh, kind of kick off soonish, and I'm looking forward to call time. I I want to see some hopefully cool things. This is from from White, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll get something better than Hellbar. Who I guess in here has a really cool beard. Does he have a cool beard here? Yeah, his beard's all right. Not, ooh, I cannot pronounce that name. I'm not going to try. Anyway, I'd like to thank my lovely patrons, especially uh, Fogwin, Malik, and Balatair, for the continued support. If you'd like to join them, support the show. My link's in the description down below. Uh, let me know what you like so far from uh, from the Kaldheim spoilers. Do not include uh, leaks, please. I would really appreciate it if you... Uh, uh, if you did not, uh, if you want to talk about leaks um, with me or my community, check out the Discord. We, we talk about them there. Um, however, I want to make sure that, um, you know, in the public space, we're um, we're exposing people to the leaks as, as little as possible. Because I do still want to support the people who get these uh, these cards. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. And of course, until next time, I'll be one.